Welcome to Syntax. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Front End Happy Hour podcast. Welcome to this week's JS Party. Live from Shipshape Studios, this is Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and me, Charles William Carpenter III. That's right, Charles. We drink whiskey and talk about web development. I mean, it's all in the name. It's not that deep. This is Whiskey Web and Whatnot. Do not adjust your set. Whiskey Web and Whatnot is brought to you by... We'll be talking about how it gets larger. And not rounder, though. It's like flatter. Live from Ship Shape Studios. That's true. Yes. Uh, Round three. Welcome. Yes. Hopefully... Because we got mega screwed twice yesterday and had to have 10 whiskeys and nothing worked. Sponsored by Riverside. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Sponsored by Riverside. Completely their fault. No, yeah. sorry guys, please. Uh, no, usually they're good and I would still recommend it. But because we had a ton of whiskey yesterday, we're going to do something a little different today. We've got uh, some things we're, we're big fans of. We've been talking about this some. Um, I don't think Fresca gets the love that it should. It's it's making a massive comeback, though. Yeah. I do think I'm seeing it more and more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was the product placement in the show, The Boys. Mm. I think it's solely responsible for the resurgence of Fresca. Interesting. No, I yeah, we'll have to ask Adam Argyle. He always mentions Fresca, too. Right, where, right. Where if he's that? just always been a fan or if he heard of it somewhere. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, I remember it as a kid or like whatever, teenager and stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Mm, delicious. And then disappeared from my life for like 20 years. <laughs> and here it is. It's back. It's back yeah. in various forms too, which is very interesting. So, should we start with the alcoholic or the non-alcoholic? Uh, non. I. Th- or, I'm sorry, alcoholic. I. Okay. Think, yeah. Today's right. yeah, episode yeah. is brought to you by. Yes. Um, so the mash bill, I'm very unclear about, but there's. I think a hundred percent malted barley. Ooh. Um. Yeah. Let's hope that. <laughs> there is calories in this one though, compared there to are. Fresca. Fresca zero calories, a little bit of juice. Well, you can't have a calorie-free alcohol. If someone invents that, they will print it's, money. I mean, game over. Yeah. Figure that out. So <laughs> today is brought to you by the Coca-Cola company. Yes. Uh, I don't know who makes this particular one. So 5% ABV. Canned by Fresca Mixed Spirits Co. Wait a minute. In Daleville, Virginia? Okay. That's like where I grew up, basically. Really? Daleville? Daleville, Daleville. is uh, where my high school was, was okay. in Daleville. Did you know this? Like the can, middle of nowhere. Wow. Did you know this contains alcohol? It does uh, have a thing up on top, so it's just a little warning. Does it say anything about if I should use heavy machinery after uh, drinking it? It it might. I uh, I don't have readers yet. I'm. Uh, I'm should we call the that. Surgeon General? Yes, you definitely. The Surgeon General <laughs> says may impair your vision and right. decision making. Take in a sip. Okay. I ha- it has notes of fresca. Ooh, it is. It's uh, it smells very grapefruity. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. Honestly, because normal Fresca has so much fake sugar, mm. this tastes more natural because it can have calories. Right, you know? it's allowed to have calories. So yeah. I wonder if it does also contain... Contains no juice, not even less than 1% yeah, juice. no juice, contains no juice whatsoever. It's got the juice. I can't mm. tell. 1.3 carbs, it's not bad. Yeah. So it's a vodka, spritz, grapefruit, citrus, mm. soda. But I think it tastes very much like a normal Fresca. It really does. Yeah, I don't detect any taste of alcohol. So if you like that in in your beverages, want a little alcohol, doesn't taste at all like alcohol, I would say, I would suggest this. Mm-hmm. If you like Fresca, it tastes like a Fresca. It's very it sure delicious does. in that sense. And I, I get what you mean, where it does somehow, with zero juice, taste a little more natural. <laughs> Uh, feels ironic that that would be the case, but alas, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as Fresca, uh, Fresca alcoholic beverages, I'm going to give it an eight. Yeah. So our highly technical well, rating scale for our new, uh, listeners, uh, Jared, shout out to you. Not the guy from Subway either. That's weird. So it's a rating system from zero to eight tentacles, zero being mm-hmm. horrible, eight being amazing. Never hit start on this recording for if it fucks up. Hold on. Wow. I can't, I'm not saying all that again. No, we're not starting over. You just we'll wanna... just have some bonus content if this doesn't work. Okay, fair enough. Bonus. Still says Roadcaster. I'm paranoid that everything's not going to work. All right. Well, um, we're really changing the format of the show. We're here in person. Yeah. So, yeah, you will. Uh, yesterday we tried to record 
We gave two shots at it. That's why this is take three, because there's no way in a single evening you could try to record three episodes of a podcast where you're tasting three whiskeys per. Yes. It's very If you difficult. had one whiskey per, yeah. you could do it. But yeah, it was it was sloppy. It was yeah. very entertaining. I'm sorry everyone <laughs> won't get to hear it later. Yeah. If but, you uh, caught the live stream, uh, you probably couldn't hear what we were saying anyway, because yeah. unfortunately <laughs> it shifted technically from these microphones mm -hmm. to the camera. Yeah. But, uh, anybody, nobody cares about it that happens. stuff. It happens. It happens. All right. So yes, I, in terms of, I'll, I'll go a different category. Yeah, like seltzery, summery alcohols. Yes. Still an eight. Still an eight. This yeah. is one of the best ones. Yeah. Fresca kills it, slays get fresca yes because why wouldn't you like that i like the high noons quite a bit there's a grapefruit run there that's pretty tasty and a peach one that's quite good uh, i don't know i've had a few of those i like those a lot i for i i don't know comparing those two things i would say i like to know a little bit that i'm drinking because if i don't then it can get you know you yeah just, oh i had three frescas oops these have alcohol yeah, so that was is probably the only knock I would have against it, but uh, they should make the one like. Have you seen all the ones like White Claw has the blue one that's like eight no. percent alcohol? Oh, geez, they should do that and add a little more kick. Okay, and uh, I, I do I would like one with a little more kick. Yeah, yeah, I could um, see that. Have you had the long drink? I, I have some. In yeah. The church oh, nice long drink, tasty, and you can kind of tell that it's some alcohol. And they have one that is also higher ABV. Mm. I forget what it's called, but it's like extra long drink. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Short drink. Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> short night for you, buddy. Yeah, so that one also pretty tasty and it has like some similar flavors. Okay. Okay. So I do want to, in the realm of beverages. Yes. From a different thing, not, not Coca-Cola, uh, Dr. Pepper. Okay. And take us back to Menomino. <laughs> because I want to revisit this. Okay. Because no one got to hear my clever right. things. So you want to, yeah. yeah. So I think Fang is dead. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Meta is, you know, it's not Facebook anymore. There's no F. Yep. So you got the M. Yep. Uh, what we're all, I need to look at the word. Okay. Menomina, 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 to be able yeah, to tell you all the letters. Uh, so all the right. reference, while you do that, actually comes from, for me, it comes from the Muppets. And there's a whole song. Do, 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 do. Manana. 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 Yeah, that Manana. was in the Dr. Manana. Pepper commercial. Manana. Manana. But in the Muppets episode, he's like doing this, doing this song. And it's really funny because it like kind of just goes on with gibberish forever. Like he goes really far away and then he's like, Manana. Manana. and then like the music's still kind of going and it's a little bit. And then like he leaves and then he like calls the backstage and Kermit picks up and then he's like, Manana. Manana. you know, again. And so it's just <laughs> ongoing like that. Anyway, so that's the reference. Yes. And eight. So, all right, Menomina. Yes. We've got Meta, Apple, Netflix, Amazon, Microsoft, Alphabet, NVIDIA. That was the new, that was another yeah. addition. Yeah. And then we need another A. If anyone listening has another A for us. Uh, yeah. And what are the qualifications though, right? Because you can come up with a bunch of companies. Yeah. I think a, it, right? like a. technology companies that are killing it enough to pay people absolutely bonkers salaries. Right. Yeah. Is so what, uh, what's in, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, another A, there's a lot of A's. Yeah. I don't have one off the top of my head. Okay. Someone probably knows. We're going to workshop this one. Yeah. So we're going to get there. I mean, I agree regardless, Fang is dead because like you said, some of those companies are no longer, I mean, there's no G because it's Google alphabet. is alphabet. So that goes away. F go becomes the M. Yeah, I do think it's a good point too that you brought up is like, why is Microsoft not in here? Like they've been doing well for quite know. a long time. I mean, I think they pay pretty decent. There's like, I think it's maybe the qualifiers are there. Maybe not as bonkers of salaries. Yeah, it's maybe. like, I don't know. it's still high, but it's not like, hmm. you know, work a few years and retire high. Okay, right. Uh, well, Jonathan Creamer, if you want to share your salary with us, uh, yeah, specifically not online. not telling you the numbers, like physically giving you money. You mean? Yeah, that would be sharing fine the too. salary. Yeah, would yeah. you share your salary with yeah. me? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm hurting. I want. I can't afford frescas all the time. Like life has gotten tough. It but, is. Uh, yeah. yeah, I do sometimes think, I drink water. Mm, it's it's a sad day, but not out of the tap or something, right? Like, <laughs> well, reverse osmosis. Oh, so okay, yes. out of that tap. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> We're not savages here. <laughs> yeah, jeez. I mean, check. I mean, check out the studio. Come on. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So I have the excellent point there. So we'll continue to workshop that one. 
And I'm yep. glad you were able to get past yes, that and do that. Were there I, any hot takes between us that you wanted to? I had the bullshit one. I don't think either about, of ours were too entertaining. No, it's not that great. But I have a strong um, opinion. But no, I, have, I have a strong opinion. I mean, we could talk, we could do we could do them. well. Why okay. not? Why yeah, not? yeah. So uh, blow pops or tootsie pops. Yeah. So I'm just gonna say the same thing I said before. Basically, yeah. You like shitty gum. I know. No, no, not that. So I I like fruitier desserts. Yes. So in candies and whatever. So like if I I don't want you know a really heavy chocolatey thing, I want the fruitier one most of the time. Depends on my mood, but right. So the, I like the blow pop. It's it's usually fruitier flavors, not as like dark. You don't have the chocolate on the inside. And you get the bonus of some gum. We kind of think the gum is a little bit shitty. Yeah. But it's it's good for a little while. Yeah. You you feel accomplished to a degree. Yeah. But for me, the Tootsie Pop, you can kind of have that same thing. You work towards the gooey center. It's chocolate-like gooey yeah. center. And <laughs> the flavor never goes away in that. You know, you chew it a little bit, boom, flavor. That's true. That's yeah. true. And I, I tend to, towards more savory things in general and deeper desserts like so german chocolate cake is my favorite cake i don't have it that much because it's super rich but when you do you're like yeah i want to punch you in the face with that yeah but, mm. i don't know All right. i don't feel mm-hmm. like talking about that anymore yeah moving on um, yeah <laughs> yeah something that i don't think we 100 percent touched on we talked about like you know mapping apps we liked but driving in general i don't think we got to how we feel about like you know, everything's going to be an electric car. There's tons of sensors on everything. They're all self-driving. Yeah. Good or bad idea? Like, should people be learning how to drive without sensors in case they are ever in that situation? Or do we never have that again? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's an interesting point. No, we did not touch on that before. Well, when I was learning to drive, everybody always said you should learn to drive with a manual because you have to be more engaged. And obviously at that point, you have no other experience. It's very important that you're paying attention all the time. Like even just an automatic trans- transmission was considered like mm, too much easy mode, you'll get distracted. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. So obviously that's just like dialed up a hundred times more yeah. than But then the reality is, is like, that's likely, you know, what that person will be driving for the rest of their time. Like, right, they, do you need to regress to, in order to, oh, I, I should drive a car with, uh, I, I should learn to drive a wagon with horses on it because that was so much harder. And so then when I get well, to I a guess car, I'll appreciate it. The kind of difference is like, if a system stops working, can you still drive? If you, if it's an automatic transmission car, you don't have the option to go, I'll opt into manual. Yeah. So I think that makes sense. If you're driving a Tesla and all of your self-driving sensors malfunction, yep. you can still drive without them, but can you? Because yep. you're not used to it, right? So like, can you park in a parking spot? Can you like merge into traffic without all the sensors and cameras and shit? Like, right. I think it's a little bit, little bit nuanced. It is a little bit. And I think it just comes down to you don't trust the robots. I definitely don't. I love the idea of no one ever having to drive like you get in your car like that i think we maybe touched on this on another episode that uh what's the show and that uh black mirror yeah they have an episode where they get in this range rover and the guy like starts driving and he drives for a little bit and he like presses a button and him and the other passenger turn around mm. so that there's just four chairs facing each other and it just drives yeah like i love way. that idea like That's you could do cool. whatever it's just like riding a train then yeah like you just Great. I can use this time for myself. I, you know, my commute or whatever it is yeah. has now become. Yeah, I like that. And I like the the possibilities that like Tesla, mm-hmm. you know, if you own one, you could have it just go like, all right, I'm going to bed. You go drive people around and make me money or like whatever. Mm. I think there's a lot of cool potential with fully autonomous stuff. Right. I think it's a little bit scary when everything is like that. Yeah. Because if you can hack it and like turn all the cars off or like. Yeah something malfunctions and everyone crashes. Like I'm sure there's a lot of redundancy built in and whatever to where that theoretically couldn't happen. But um, I mean, if someone is being malicious, they're gonna find all those redundant things and break them too. Yeah, possibly. So like, I don't know, it's it's scary, but cool. Right, yeah. Like from a comfort perspective, it's pretty great. I do think that to me as compute becomes more and more a part of our lives, as automation to a degree becomes part of our lives, AI like things become part of our lives. I do think that like there are other risks to that. Like, oh, our life gets easier, but then we've just kind of 
stopped having control of so many things Mm -hmm. and to a certain degree like security needs now have like really scaled up so that's what i think is an interesting perspective around when we talk about by software development and how much becomes ai generated and whatever else i think for a while we're going to have like an era of like the supervisor like role it's sort of like yes Output is still faster because AI is doing a lot of things, but you still need someone to sort of like, you know, manage that, understand the prompts, understand the outputs, and then kind of like, you know, take that to the next degree. And then beyond that, we have like massive security concerns about in general, like how much of our life becomes automated and then like you just never think about it again. But then again, then you don't know if something malicious is happening. You don't know all that stuff until Mm -hmm. like something terrible and catastrophic happens. So I think those are things that are going to exist through this next evolution for us as a society. So yeah, I think we've trended fully away from understanding anything from most technology we use. Right. For better or worse, like you hit a point where things are so complex that you just don't expect to understand it. Hardware for me is all magic. You're just like sending some electrical impulses through random shit and it like, Interprets all that this. into these. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's a good, I don't know. I don't know what we want to talk about in this episode, but something we talked about earlier, like, is college going to be a thing? Or are we going back to like, let's just be a blacksmith or like, yeah, like, like do we, is technology so or... solved that we need to only do physical world stuff? You know, well, I think we're a ways away from that. Sure, I mean, sure, possibly sure. it is like, yeah, the intention of college is education in general and job preparation or career preparation. It's not as genericized as it had been for, you know, a couple, a few decades, wherein like go to college, earn your degree, get your own up job. Yeah. I don't think it, it, I mean, we've already seen where like that doesn't exist to a great yep. degree as some jobs become more automated, more computer driven. Obviously there's some challenges there. Yeah, I think I think college is ripe for disruption in a lot of ways. I think oh, yeah. the education system is ripe, ripe for disruption because you know, the public education system was developed to produce like factory workers and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like okay, farmers Just are like no longer 40 hour work week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you know, you, we go from like being farmers in the industrial revolution to switching to like, well, now we need production. Production isn't quite the thing anymore. What are we educating for as a society? College needs a, a strong look as well, because what are we preparing for? Like, what are you being educated towards? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've already created the world's best tasting beverage. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. So we don't need to yeah. like work on beverages anymore. That's solved. Yeah. This town is able to make podcast hosts and fresca <laughs> beverages. Like they, yeah. they, they've got some things. Yeah. The going high in school there. is a solid three out of 10. Mm. It's uh, really good. You, yeah. It did have a lot of agriculture related teaching stuff. Interesting. Like if you wanted to be super. I'm going to be just a mechanic or whatever. You went to like a fully separate school for like half the day. Oh, right. Yeah. But there was stuff at our school where it was like, you got your, you know, classic wood shop or like, yeah. but there were more things around like, you know, trades there. And that was like the more farmer side of the school. If you were like I trying see. to go to college, you didn't go in that hallway that much. Me and my friend mm-hmm. took a, what was it called? I want to say it was called like applied ag tech or something like that. I don't know. It, it had, oh my God. I don't know if I've told you about this. I'm not sure. I don't think so. We had a test. You had a piece of paper and it had five or six lines on it. And they gave you a ruler and they said, tell me, like, write down the measurements of these lines. Okay. It sounds like you can't do poorly on it, right? Right. Like, yeah. The answer is on your ruler. Yeah. The, the kid next to me got a zero. <laughs> a zero. A zero. Correct. I don't rem- know how. But I was just like, damn, you just yeah. had to measure these lines. And, uh, and he became an excellent farmer, though. You know, that's a, well, went somewhere. You don't have to direction. measure things to be a farmer. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. There, I remember that part of like high school where you had like some kids went off to the trade, whatever thing, and they would yeah. learn things like masonry and whatever else. It seemed kind of cool. Yeah. But it seems interesting, but like, yeah. that wasn't the path that like, was blessed at the time you're supposed to go to college right like, of course yeah so i think we've backed off that a bit now so yeah i think those are 
ton of respect for tradespeople and like the ability that like plumbers, that's a great job. Like, guess what? AI is not going to replace plumbers at any point, but in the near future, robots. Well, well, what's going to happen though is the people who've done plumbing forever and are great at it are going to end up start retiring as all the people who are a mid-level JavaScript engineer yeah. get pushed out by AI and become a plumber. Yeah. Then it becomes saturated. Plumbers don't make that much money. Now they're all electricians. Mm. And then the same thing happened. And like, I think everything will be so commoditized, so cheap. So like, there's not going to be a great thing to specialize in that you can make a lot of money in. Like, right. I think doctors, I guess, will stay that way, but sure. that's still a lot of school. You incur a lot of school. You so, incur a lot of debt. Yeah. We said like lawyers could potentially be disrupted somehow. I think there's that yeah. possibility. Well, you know, and the thing is, is um, it's not like doctors make tons of money worldwide. I think that's very much a, there's certain countries and cultures where it is more than, yeah. and less depending. Well, in our healthcare system where it's incentivized to be unhealthy so that they can do the insurance fraud game all right. over the place. And it's not fraud um, if you're sick. <laughs> is that is that what the law says? So whenever so. I'm sick, I can commit as much fraud. As Absolutely, I want. yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all it is. That's it. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. You just start sending out some Keep bills. That in mind. Yes, I'm, I'm as, sick. Next time I'm idea. sick, I am suddenly a uh, Nigerian prince, and I've I've lost access to my millions of dollars. But yeah. if you send me a thousand dollars, I can access it. Yeah, or you'll write me a check for well over that, and if I just give you the thousand yeah. back, it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or or PayPal. Yes, yeah. definitely PayPal. Friends and family. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's a very high level conversation. I think what had like started this is last night we were saying like knowing your craft and things like that, like specializing versus generalizing and like mm -hmm. what is that and what do we favor in that when it comes to software development, web as a whole. I do think you should know your tools. That's a thing is yep. like well beyond like, oh, I learned React and I should learn JavaScript, so I understand the native APIs and what what works on the web. But like, how does the web work? You know, like I type in an address. What is that? Oh, that goes. Yeah. Goes. How does it know where to go? It yeah. does. Yeah, it does DNS and it gets into you know into your server. How does it get routed to the right files and all of that crazy stuff? I think that's worth knowing, at least having that yeah. understanding of how it works, even if you yeah. never do it yourself. Yeah, I think we like for so long things were changing so much. And there was so much cool new stuff you could do on the front end and in the web. Knowing that stuff was enough to get you by in your career. Yeah. And I think now it's regressing back to like, you got to be pretty senior to get a job first off. Yep. And then like the folks who aren't willing to like do, you know, anything you're asked really. It's like, if you're doing a lot of web stuff and then they're like, well, I need some help with like some infrastructure or yeah you know, config here, some back end work, some front end work, some whatever. And just kind of knowing the complexities of like, you know, fundamentals kind of apply across a lot of that. I don't have great examples. Like, you know, one that's easy is like, you know, knowing complexity of a function. Like if you mm. put 16 for loops together, probably, probably slow. That's bad. Yeah. Yeah. How big? It, yeah. And how big is the iterator? 15, 15 is yeah, good. 15 is Six, it. 16 is. Uh, uh, yeah. A couple thousand elements in, in the array or iterator or whatever. Right. It's yeah. Totally fine. And preferably if you could use nothing but ternaries for all of, all of your uh, checks yeah, in there too. Makes it more readable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean like stuff like that is applicable front end and back end and like, right. you know, knowing a little infrastructure, being able to set up your own web server, et cetera. I think a lot of that is valuable. You don't necessarily, like I've always been team, like computer science doesn't matter for web development. Right. I think if you're going to be a, you know, full stack, no, do everything, it starts to matter a little more. Mm -hmm. Not as much as like, if you're a uh, game developer or something that's very math heavy and like, yeah. you know, that needs a lot more algorithms and whatever. But I think we're, we're definitely leaning more towards be an engineer be flexible, be willing to learn new tools yeah, and be able to pivot quickly. And that's going to be, you can do whatever, wherever. A lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I guess the other side of that is like specialization can be good at times. There's been various times throughout the industry thus far or project specific, whatever it is. It just, well, it makes more sense that I kind of focus over here. It makes more sense that you focus there. A couple on our team are sort of helping both of us. And, you know, we get there in that way. I remember when that started to happen more, it had a lot more to do with like 
specializing in accessibility and uh, like things of that nature. Oh, we have a separation of concerns and, you know, you know a lot to make, like, I mean, CSS can be complicated and the cascade can be very challenging and have someone like- Not just like, can be, I think CSS is the most complex part today. Oh. They keep adding new crazy shit and oh, I don't right. understand oh, anything. Yeah, yeah, I'm so far <laughs> behind, it's, yeah. And so having like specialization in those areas, if and when needed, I think can be good. Yeah. But like understanding everything that happens when it comes to like, you know, delivering for the web. I think that just kind of makes sense to like, yeah. I love hammers, but I know how screwdrivers work, you know, right. that kind of thing. Yeah, I do think like a great model, but is maybe not like the most economical model for most companies is to have really focused niche experts like a you got a CSS guy. Yeah. And he's not necessarily doing a lot of coding. He's just really hardcore, knows anything you'd want to know about CSS. Yeah. So that if you're like, I have a button and it needs to draw a border around it. <laughs> yeah. It they can tell you example. instead of me spending five months or yeah. like some insane amount of time figuring yeah. out this stupid little thing. It's like, they're like, oh yeah, I, I know exactly. That. Oh, I got you. Yeah, does, uh, does that person have to have like an arbitrary H somewhere in their name? Like you're like, I don't say it. it and then, it, uh, yeah, I don't understand, yeah. but okay, I'm gonna just trust you. Well, it's, it's kind of like the H in bear. Yeah. And he has a bear mascot. So. Yeah, like the bear, oh yeah, like, like the, the bear B -E paint. B-E-H-R. Yeah, B-E-H-R, <laughs> right. Beher. Yeah, <laughs> I always say beher. You do? Yeah, that's okay. not how it goes. That's why I didn't know what you were referencing. So, yeah, that's that's uh, they have those commercials where they sing about it now. So. Yes, yes. This just in: Whiskey Fund is now open for all your merch needs. That's right, Robbie. We're hearing reports of hats, sweaters, and T-shirts, as well as a link to join our Discord server. What's a Discord server? <sighs> Just read the prompter, man. Hit subscribe, leave us a review on your favorite podcast app, and tell your friends about our broadcast. It really does help us reach more people and keeps the show growing. All right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. So yeah, those are my thoughts around generalization and specialization. And let's see, you, yeah. you didn't realize you should have brought yourself additional frescoes so you can continue to taste it and think about your... Oh, you know what? We had the alcohol one and the not alcohol one, but what we didn't consider is that there are three other flavors of the alcohol one. Should <laughs> we, we get not. those? You just opened your not alcohol one, but that's fine. That's what I want to do. All right, let's do it. Because I'm going to do a little Pepsi a little, challenge. Yeah, yeah, I just okay. finished tasting that one, so I'm going to have a little yep, sip of that yep. one. Mm. Have another Mr. Carpenter. I uh, somehow They spoke. taste very similar. Very similar. I think this one, maybe the 1% juice... Like it has a tinge more acid. Tart. Yeah. Yeah. A and it has tart. a lot more aspartame or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of me. <laughs> That's not how it goes. Yeah. That's uh, part of me. That is how it's spelled. I'll spa I to me. <laughs> That's how I have said it because it's funny. Yes. Yeah. So serious thoughts around the web and knowing your craft. And, but since you said the whole thing's going to go away from robots, so maybe we shouldn't waste our time. But I do think that the one thing I can say for sure, anything I make a bet on, especially financially, that's true. do it's the opposite. Go backwards, yeah. So not probably AI is going to, instead of becoming sentient and taking us out, is yeah. going to become like, take itself out somehow. Like yeah. AI will just implode and not be a thing anymore. And then everyone will have planned on it being a thing and lost all their money. You know, would have protected all of this though, if we would have just let all of those NFT people have it. Like if we made Web3 successful and legitimate and- We're on Web5 now. We, we made fun of them and they were like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna teach the robots to get you fired and now you're done. So make fun of me. I Blockchain, motherfucker. I kind of- I don't know. Maybe I'm easy to please, but I mm. liked NFTs and I liked, I like a lot of things. And I'm like, I get on the hype train and I'm like, let's go, let's do more of this. I'm having a fun time. And then everyone loses interest like one day later and mm. it goes away. Like Pokemon Go was that way. I mm. loved that there was a game I could play outside, but still play a fun game, mm. walk around, like whatever. And everyone was like all on that for a month. And then they were like, this sucks. And I'm like, why? Like, no one has any attention span, myself included. But oh, like, right. but apparently enough for that. When there's a thing I like, I, it's 
like an ADHD thing too, or you, mm. you focus on a thing you like and that's all you do. Right. I think I, I definitely have done that. Like, does that game still like exist? If it does. other people it don't does. play, does that somehow take away your joy? <sighs> yes. And this is a weird thing for me. I don't exactly get why, but it, I guess it's just something about like, like I don't necessarily ever need to even play directly with any people. Right. But the fact that like a lot of people do a thing and I can objectively be like, look, I'm better at the thing. <laughs> like playing Diablo, I play, you grind a lot, you get a lot of gear and you'd be like, look, my character could beat your character. Right. Whether or not we ever actually fight. Yeah. I just like, it feels like you're part of a community. You're like building a real thing versus if no one else is playing the game. It's like, well, okay, I'm the best at like this on my computer, yeah. but I never see anyone online. It's just, it feels arbitrary and dumb and like I shouldn't do it. Okay, so well, that's fair. I was just curious, like, if you liked the game, you could just keep playing it, right? I mean, it's possible. Yes, it is possible, but it's it's more fun. Uh, Pokemon Go, for sure, is more fun with more people. Nice. Like, you go to a park with friends, and you all play. You can take off and do that. And that's yeah. like an AR game with your phone, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Did you that's never play it? I didn't, no. Uh, yeah, I think it's only on phone. Yeah, so there, there's like pokey stops, which are like places of interest. Yeah. And you like go to those and then every five minutes you can like get loot from it or whatever. So, mm. and as you're walking, like the more you walk, the more like Pokemon you encounter. So you just kind of walk in a circle, hit all of like the pokey stops around right. the way. So like usually parks are a great place to just walk around. And yeah, I mean, it does seem like a fun thing for kids. Like, yeah. like my kids like Pokemon, but if it's just on a phone, they don't have phones. They're five and eight. That's that would be ridiculous, right? I mean, they did do a thing too, where like, I mean, by this point, I wasn't playing anymore, but right. they had like a couple Pokemon games for uh, Switch. Okay, and you could transfer, like, you could catch Pokemon uh, on Pokemon yeah, Go, yeah. and you could transfer them to your game and oh, just keep playing. Okay, that's interesting. So there's a lot of cool stuff. It just seems like it all fizzles out. Like people spend all this time making a really cool thing, and it is really cool and does really well, and then just like, yeah. I mean, that's a pretty short life cycle. If it was like a one month kind of thing. I'm rubber. exaggerating. Yeah, it was probably that. more, but it I, wasn't very long. Yeah, didn't feel like long enough. Like mm. I, when I find a game I like and it's a game that has no end and you're just grinding, right? I could play that for a decade. Hmm. Like, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely need some sort of like finality to it so that I can be like, I got the trophy, I beat it. I don't know. I'm not a completionist. Um, I, I may give me a short task. Let me go do it. Yep. Give me the dopamine hit. Give yep. me the next one. Mm. That's how the games I like. Like games that have an end, like a game with a story like Skyrim. I yep. never play the main quest. Right. I just do the side quest for those quick little, this is fun. Oh, I stole a thing. Oh, I did a Thieves Guild thing. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. not like, I need to go fight this dragon and kill him. I don't care about that. Like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I actually, I took that game pretty far. That is one I did not finish. And I, because I started a bunch of different quests and what I learned is a bunch of them, you end up getting like a companion. Mm -hmm. And if you like start a few of them and then you, all of a sudden there's like four or five of you walking around and you can kick anybody's ass <laughs> because they're all- You go like, to fight the dragon, it's dead. Yes, yeah, it's just like, <laughs> they do all the work for me. I'm like, oh, I'm half, you know, par I'm almost a master thief. I'm almost a vampire. I'm almost a werewolf or I, you know, all those things. Yeah. And then you get those people with you. Yeah. Yeah. That was like a really fun thing. And then I did a bunch of stuff and then I was like, oh, now I'm kind of at a point where I have to finish some of these. I don't think that's as fun. I don't want to lose my people. I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh, I am ready for the next Elder Scrolls whenever that comes out. Yeah. They make great games and it, there's a lot of like choices to make and like, yeah, I like everything is finals. Worlds. Yeah. Like if you are, buddies with the guy who sells the best armor yep and you steal something and the guards come try to attack you that guy will try to save you get killed and you can never buy that armor. i know <laughs> yeah, right like, oh no like wow this like they really went in depth for like how this works yeah like, yeah there's no take backsies mm -hmm. so say i recently finally beat tears of the kingdom the mm -hmm. zelda game and i was kind of doing that thing like you were saying there's so many side quests and things like that or you have like goals to get this you know different powerful armor and then you want to upgrade those things and then you have to go harvest stuff from dragons that's a grind because you once you harvest one piece you have to wait 10 actual minutes to be able to get another piece 
Yeah. And so then I was just like riding dragons forever. Can you reset your system time 10 minutes different or something? I don't think so. Is there so. a hack? I don't, I don't, I never found a hack. I this looked is a little a, bit. Did you ever play Animal Crossing at all? No, not so at all. So this is a thing that everyone does in Animal Crossing. You time travel, like you want a uh, a Christmas item or something, right? So right. you go to then or like you want a thing that takes three days to grow. You just move it three days and go get it. Oh, like, that's fine. Um, yeah. So you just manipulate the game so it's just timestamps and then whatever yeah i don't know i don't know if that would have been possible but i would basically like ride the dragon because they go in these loops forever you know and you'd be like well it's like 10 minutes i can just stand here yeah. even when you go to the you know underworld and all that stuff you just kind of hang out and yeah. i'll go do a thing i come back in 10 minutes and I'm like okay now it's time to get another yeah I mean, it would be interesting test is like is it system time based or is there like a timer running in the game that's yeah like reset right that'd be some clever stuff so yeah knows? i can't say for sure didn't think about system time yeah seems like a big hack yeah yeah <laughs> caleb's played animal crossing for years now so she right. knows all the things she has all the fruits all the all the animals all yeah the i don't even know the point of it to be honest i've never played it never even uh, looked into it so. it's just there's not a huge point. It's like get all the, what do you call them? Guess is the wrong word. Inhabitants, I guess. Like the, their animals, get the ones you want. Yep. Because you can take the ones you don't like and tell them like, you know, I think you should move to another island and they'll just leave and then other people will show up mm. and you like, you know, accumulate the ones you like. All the fruits, your island only grows one fruit. Mm. So you have to play online with other people. And they give you the other fruits. You can plant them, then you grow all of them. I see. It's like a, you know, just getting all the items getting all the people like it's a like purely grinding 100 percent completion kind of game I like that way yeah the way caitlin plays it though she just like really likes designing stuff mm. so she like you can go online and get every pattern like people have there's like a online store people will upload stuff right so you can be like i want you know this carpet or mm. like sometimes they do actual collaborations like paid stuff would be like oh this shirt is like a, a todd snyder shirt or whatever right, right right so it's like cool stuff like that you can customize everything build your buildings the way you want like like yeah. a like a life simulator but cartoony yeah like, i guess so it's like yeah the sims but more cartoony to yeah. a degree and you don't have to just like, less real yeah. yeah less real a little more fantasy at least mm -hmm. there's that division there i never yeah. really got the sims like what do, you know what i want to like go to work and I, yeah, I don't understand the actual and... gameplay. Caitlin plays that too, but does none of the actual gameplay and just builds houses. Okay. So it's fun for a like house renovation simulator. Basically. Yeah, there you go. That's, yeah, that's like, the fun way. Yeah. Yeah, it's a low, like there's no risk. I yeah. get to redesign my house, but not the real one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, fair enough. That's a lot of uh, what naughty like yeah. things, but. Reels or Django? <laughs> so I think, I mean, I like Django just because I have a history with it. I think it's good at what it does and and all of that but it was developed you know primarily for publishing right it's very cmse it is like a publishing engine that's what it was created for so there's that aspect of it and that's kind of the way i used it and rails is like build apps with speed all these things that apps need are batteries included i like that aspect of it and I also like having had experience with like Ember, which was influenced by it. And then like, I feel like it's a familiar vernacular and I kind of mm -hmm. like that. Like active record is awesome. I think it's great. So, so I guess in this sense, where I'm at now, I would say res. Okay. I don't know. I need to do more backend. Yeah. And I really, I haven't made up my mind. I like all the conventions for sure. Yep. As long as it's fairly batteries included. And I don't know. Yeah. It comes down to the base languages syntax. Like, do you like Python? Do you like PHP? Do you like mm. Ruby? I tend to like PHP the most syntax wise, but maybe just because I've used it more. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like you would pick Python out of those. Never, things. never Python. No. Yeah. So Django can't, out can't do that. that. .NET maybe. Yeah. .NET is just a fancier JavaScript. I like, was gonna say like C sharp does kind of read like TypeScript, so yeah. it's like not crazy. Mm -hmm. to go into that i hear a lot of good things about modern.net so mm -hmm. like that's interesting we seem to trust microsoft with so much of our life you know our professional life not my real life well your professional and your play life because they have games and 
yeah they PCs have and xboxes and right i yeah i've had one xbox my entire life and it was fun or whatever else that's fine was i it guess the original xbox it was yeah do you remember those controllers were like this big yeah yeah and then they made a way smaller one like why was they? the original so like, huge it definitely was like very thick very bulky yeah. i don't know why i chose that at the time because i had a playstation one when they first came out loved that I think uh, my brother had a PlayStation 2 or something. That was fine. I didn't have a gaming system for a while. And then I was like, I want to play FIFA. I want to play soccer games. So I got an Xbox for whatever mm. reason. Yeah, kind I of. If you didn't want deals. Halo, it was kind of like, no. why, why would you choose Xbox? Because yeah. everything was on PlayStation as well. Like all the... Yeah, like I used to like Need for Speed. I actually like racing games. I haven't played them in quite some time, but I liked all of those. I mean, like... Resident Evil and Tomb Raider is essentially why I bought a PlayStation to begin with. Yeah, I walked in to a gaming store. I remember, I don't know how old I was. It must have been like 18 or something, maybe at most. See, they were playing Resident Evil and it blew my mind. I was like, this is incredible. I bought it on the spot. The whole yeah. Thing. Like, I don't really have money, but I'm doing this because this is incredible. Yeah, the couple, like the first couple Resident Evils yeah. were like, they were very scary-ish too. Yeah. Like, I feel like later on they became more about just a fun game. They weren't as like kind of campy later, but yeah. initially they were really more in that horror. I remember game genre. watching people play them and like you jump, yeah, jump all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, it was it was very scary. Yeah, very yeah. scary. So yeah, I don't know. All that is to say is that I've yeah I've been involved with various Microsoft things. I definitely have been a hater many a times. I'm like, fuck Windows. Like, no, this is all too hard all the time. I, yeah. I still don't think Windows is great, to be honest. Like, no, and I they would not choose it. They're trying to force me into doing things I don't want. Yeah. I have a super expensive Mac Pro. Mm -hmm. I run boot camp on it. That's how I play my games. Okay. Windows 11 is not compatible with that setup. Oh. And I mean, kind of Mac fault too they're doing away with boot camp because you yeah. can't run it on apple, apple chips. silicon yeah so i'm like you're really just for like what seems to me basically no reason yep. going to force me to build a gaming computer yeah just to play games i guess the thing that i could do is they are making it more compatible of like you could play a game on your xbox with people on a pc so i could just right. sit yeah, out there on my platform Xbox. stuff yeah. is fun yeah i i think that's cool and uh, so maybe that's the solution because I would much rather have an Xbox lay on the couch and play than yeah than get a separate computer just for that case yeah yeah well I mean I think uh, you were saying you heard Dax talk about in Tomorrow FM about Nvidia having kind of like a streaming setup yeah I'm yeah, curious about that too yeah I yeah. guess you could do that on any like Mac or and PC or whatever. Yeah, yeah that would be like anything so if it's anything like Stadia I loved Google Stadia. You had a controller and this like special like fire stick essentially. And you didn't even have to, it was basically a Bluetooth controller though too. So you did that with like a TV, but if you were like on an iPad or a computer or whatever else, it's just a Bluetooth controller. You can connect that and do that. And it's streaming games. It mm -hmm. was incredible. It was really fun. Like the only downside is you always need an internet connection. So you can't like play on a flight. Yeah. I go back and forth on, on that, on technology and everything being like, I miss owning physical things. Right. And we go back and forth and people remember that's cool. And yeah. we like, you know, records are cool again. Yeah. Like, so we've got records. And uh, I just pre-ordered the remake of the N64. Mm. So like mm -hmm. you can play, I already have the Super Nintendo version. Yeah. So I'm, and the Game Boy and, you know, I'm very into that. I want, like, I think that is a great way. I feel like my growing up having video games, but not, having them connected to the internet yeah. is the perfect thing. Cause it's like, it's still really fun. I still get to play a video game, but I don't have that. Like, it's not a grindy all the time. Yeah. Online trying to be better than my friends or whatever. Yeah. yeah it's just like a game starts and it ends. And while that might not be my favorite game today, yeah, I think for kids growing up, that's a great way to do it. And it's like, so that I'm really gonna, I'm going to let Finn play a ton of games, but they're, all are not online. Yeah, I see. Um, that makes sense. And I, I mean, that's the plan. Of course, yeah. he'll be like, well, my friends are playing Minecraft yeah. 45 and I need to like... And I want, well, yeah, yeah. So, uh -oh. you know, it's there's trade-offs there. It's yeah. like, well, in my day, and you end up being that kind of parent and 
all of that. But yeah, I see what you mean where there's like a closed loop there or actually going back to what you said around, you don't actually own anything. Like it's convenience to be able to stream something. I can pick all this music uh, online through my streaming service. I can, you know, the billion streaming services for entertainment. You can find that and games, similar thing. You go onto Steam or EA.com or whatever else and you buy a game, but they technically you don't really own it right? Yep. Like it's just on that machine and yeah. it's like very locked down and they kind of say you don't really own it. That's the weird thing. I can't resell it. And I'm, and the problem I have too is that, okay, if it's going to be this kind of system, when I went to buy a game, it would be 50 bucks or something. And it's still 50, $60 plus, except for I don't own it anymore. Like I can't be done with it and take it to GameStop and trade it in. I can't yeah. like loan it to my friend. Like that's a very weird like a, that I don't. If like. you buy a game from Steam, you pay the full game price. You that if you went and bought the disc, you'd pay the same. Yeah. But if you if Steam went away or you don't have a Steam account, there's just no way to get it. Yeah, that's it. You've lost it. Yeah. So there's kind of like so I hate that. The one I do like is the more like super duper subscription based, like the Microsoft whatever. You like ten bucks a month, twenty bucks a month, whatever. Yeah. You get every game. Yeah. Then EA does that. That makes more now. sense because it's like. I'm not actually paying for the games. I'm paying for access to the entire library of games. But yeah, yeah when you're buying one, I do think that's fucked up that you yeah. don't get I hate to own that. It. Yeah. I always wait till they're on big sales, except for the soccer ones, because FC, it's, it used to be FIFA, now it's called FC, whatever. It's FC 25 this year, and like 70 club. fucking dollars. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. That's what it means. You know, it's a, kind of expensive. And basically, it's like most of the time, it's a roster update the new jerseys and the new mm. players and. For the next year, I kind of get that. But then if I want the new one next year, I got to pay $70 again. Yeah, I don't, I don't get game development. I get that like engines change and you have to make new games to be on the new engine or right. like, but it seems like there'd be a lot of stuff you could repeat use. Yeah, definitely there but are they assets. Don't seem that, to. No, I don't I think they do like, with these FIFA games or whatever, maybe. sports games. Like the, EA in general is notorious for like, you know, somebody makes an indie game, they yeah. buy that ruin it <laughs> and like then a year later rewrite the whole like sims 3 to sims 4 mm. was a complete rewrite and a okay. lot of stuff got way worse oh i see like the snow textures there used to be it looked kind of realistic like snow mm. would fall be different depths oh. lo looked like snow on a bush or whatever right. the new one they just changed the color of the ground to white there's no texture at oh, all yeah lame like how did we regress they have a better engine yeah. You telling me you couldn't make snow in that? Like, yeah, you couldn't do better than like a handheld. Yeah. Game? Like, so I don't get how like it rushed. We we do that. May, yeah. Maybe it's just they don't have time and they got to get it out. Yeah. And maybe go. we'll put in better snow later. We don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess that's like the plus side is that updates are on the fly, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you have to do patches, updates, whatever else, you get that on the fly. But I don't know. The price should reflect that. I don't own this. You're going to do different things. If I pay you 30 bucks a year, can I always have the new version? Like, I don't know, maybe I'm okay with that. But You're when leasing it's like, your games. I mean, <laughs> if they have no like resale residual value because I don't own a thing, right? Like what if they told you every year you gotta buy a new guitar, this one just uh, stopped playing and you can't do anything with it and sorry, but if you wanna keep playing guitar, like yeah, just pay us every year, buy a new one, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know, it's, yeah. it's a strange model for me, so yeah, I don't know. I, that that was a bit of a rant uh, around that, but that's like the whole thing where like physical media has really kind of started to go away. Yeah, and nobody owns any media whatsoever, and you just yeah. pay. And what happens when someone turns the internet off? Right. Yeah, that's it. It's done. I mean, aside from me not wanting to live anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. You'll be like, "There's no here." My wife and child aren't enough. No, this is uh, what am I going to do with myself? <laughs> no, I mean, it's you'd have more money for donuts because I'm not paying for internet. That's right. <laughs> yeah, which internet price is going up? But if I wouldn't have a job, yeah. I'll, so <laughs> right, there's no internet. Or, well, I mean, there were programmers before the internet, and maybe there'll be programmers mm, after. Sure. Right, yeah, yeah, you'd have to adapt. Like, you know, you could program robots or some cool shit. That is, that's an interesting Hardware point. Does if there fun. was a like zombie apocalypse, yep. And, you know, there's a long time of you've got to kill a lot of the zombies off, reestablish society. Yep. At which point would people be like, 
I could program again. Like, I feel like it'd be a long time before yeah. you gave a shit about programming. Yeah. I think that's possible. You could give a serious, like, what's the point? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, it's not going to make you any money to spend two years in a bunker building a video game. <laughs> and then come out, look, I built a video game. Cool. Well, all right. My one friend who's alive still can play it yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's on a floppy disk and we have to find a way to load this. <laughs> Well, how did you get it on the floppy disk if you don't have a way to load yeah, it? Yeah, I just have a writer, not a reader. Uh, what can I say? You know? okay. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> afford both. I type it here, it goes on. I don't know from there. Replicator or something of that nature. I don't know how that all worked, but I don't know. Uh, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Fresca. Yeah. Sparkling soda water. Well, both, both Fresca and Coca-Cola, because this one is Coca-Cola. Yeah. And this one is like Fresca Mixed Spirits Company or something. Yeah, which I think is interesting. Does somebody own like the trademark that isn't Coca Cola? And like Coca Cola just distributes this? We're heavy into whatnot land. I, I think, think it's worth asking. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how this company is Fresca Mixed Spirits. Yeah. But I know that Coca Cola is licensing all these names. Mm -hmm. To alcohol people like the Topo Chico. Oh, yes, yes. Topo Chico is a Coke product, right? Oh, they are. Uh huh. Oh. Which I didn't know. I found that I find out a lot because that's that's how I got reintroduced to Fresca. We stayed with Caitlin's uncle, and he worked for Coke, and so there's just all this stuff. And I was like, huh? I thought like everything he had at his house was a Coke product. That's weird. He's a Topo Chico. Oh, that's Coke product, right? Like so that's how you <laughs> learned. There's the connection there. Yeah. Because I was like I had four no idea. brands in the world on everything, mm -hmm. like Nestle and Coca Cola, and like, yeah. yeah. And the waffles. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. Waffles. There was a waffle recall, and every single waffle brand was like, were recalled. Who knew? So, yeah. Yeah. I had no That's idea. I thought problem. Kodiak waffles were special. They yeah. had protein. Yeah. They're a special company. I'm special. I'm having my yeah. healthy waffles. Did you get them from Costco? No. Oh. I don't have a Costco membership. Wow. How do you even live in this world? You <sighs> know what I think it is? Is you have that, like, tan to special tan toilet paper and they don't sell it so you just like don't go there no i i like costco i've just never really felt like i want to buy bulk anything and i get that they're not all of it is like that huge of quantities and whatever but i'm just like it's busy all the time it is it's, it's like camping. don't go on the weekends i mean that's amateur hour bullshit yeah. like i i am casually interested in getting a membership but also my dad has a membership and Caitlin's parents have a membership. So like when they're here, we'll go get some stuff occasionally. Yeah. Like I got a ton of wine there. Their wine oh, is yeah. really good. The wine selection's good. They're like prepared dinners and stuff are pretty good. I mean, the meats are incredible. I mean, you just have to be ready to buy a shit ton of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. We got a bunch of uh, sea bass from there mm. that was like way more expensive than I thought it yeah. would be. But, well, uh, online you can get like you can order wagyu beef like a5 wagyu beef like a bunch of crazy stuff uh yeah. like luxury goods and shit like yeah i've heard they have like they'll have get like two gucci bags or something oh yeah like I they get know. random weird designer stuff i don't know why yeah Hard but that's say. a thing that like people on tiktok or something like hmm. costco designer shop and they'll be like oh this place has like you know two gucci bags this place has some uh some prada or like yeah. whatever like huh. and they just help each other like find all those markets things and they they resell they all of it and, yeah. there you go yeah the yeah. turnaround there i've not done that i bought like tires there before like replaced mm -hmm. air conditioners yeah. yeah you can do that yeah. actually we got our garage door through there yeah. and you end up with like some 500 hundred dollar like costco gift card if you do it through mm -hmm. them so like that was cool i got the executive membership which mm. only for executives you would think, but uh, I'm an unemployed executive. So, you know, but the cool thing about it is like, okay, it's, I think it's maybe like double the price or something, a normal membership, but you get cash back from it and they guarantee you that if you don't get enough cash back that equals the membership cost, they just, that's the minimum. So they cut you the check for the membership. Like, hmm. okay, it's $120. If you don't get enough cash back collected to get yourself at least $120, they just make it that much so it's like kind of pays for itself and it's like a yeah. good way to get you in the door in that way gas does not count but it also has like the best gas prices mm -hmm. in town for us and yeah i don't know yeah i'm a, i'm a big fan yeah so 
I don't know. Maybe yeah, we should I'm try sure it more. This episode is brought to you by Costco. Kirkland Where the hot dogs are yeah, always the, hot the same dogs, price. A dollar fifty <laughs> forever. Apparently, like the founder was yeah. like, that price will never change. Yeah, it's smart. It gets people in. It gets people in the door. And yeah, it's a good you don't hot have dog. to make money on everything. No, Just you don't. make money on a few things. You don't get out of that place without spending at least $100. That's the oh, thing yeah. is like, oh, I just need two things. Well, guess what? These things are in bulk. You still spend $100. Good luck, motherfucker. Yeah. If I walk through like one aisle of snacks, I'm probably getting half the stuff. There, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, bet. I do. The only reason I do kind of like to go in the weekends is I like sample time. Mm -hmm. And I've gone like... My daughter really likes it. She I loves it. sample as a kid time. Went to Sam's Club, but same thing. Yeah, same thing. And she'll like get in the cart and she'll be like, drive over there. And she doesn't eat anything except for Costco samples. Then she will try everything have, there. Have you tried making food at home in like a tiny plastic cup with a little uh, fork or whatever? So that she can pretend oh, it's right. a sample. Yeah, but... a little paper cup. <laughs> and then she's, dude, I just serve her yeah. like five yeah, of those. This is a, the finest piece of hot dog <laughs> i will go pretty far to try to get her to eat but i'm not sure that's it and she doesn't mind hot dogs she'll eat hot dogs she likes salami sandwiches mm. macaroni and cheese any noodles whatsoever but plain no sauces it's noodles with butter and cheese on it and that's mm -hmm. it any cheese yep. she will eat cheese and then butter and bread that's it yeah i mean that's still more than finn's general diet but uh well you know he'll get there yeah he, he loves pouches though so still mm. getting vegetables yeah you like <laughs> pouches belly pouches yeah oh. there you go oh i forgot about those donuts here <laughs> well on that note where are we at seems like Ro robbie's ready to wrap up all right out there yeah well thanks yeah. for joining us today yeah hopefully and, the uh, audio continued to work and i don't know it wasn't as interesting as the last two right. but or at least as you far get as you what remember you get. yeah you get what you get maybe those were more interesting because i had had a lot of alcohol but yeah it could be it seems <laughs> like you seemed really intelligent and and well spoken last night i don't know what happened today but uh well if you like this more casual format where we sit around and talk to each other let us know and i will let my wife know and see if she wants to move all right thanks for listening catch you next time You've been watching Whiskey Web and Whatnot, recorded in front of a live studio audience. What the fuck are you talking about, Chuck? Enjoyed the show? Subscribe. You know people don't pay attention to these, right? Head to whiskey.fun for merch and to join our Discord server. I'm serious. It's like 2% of people who actually click these links. And don't forget to leave us a five-star review and tell your friends about the show. All right, dude, I'm out of here. Still got it.